Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. Today I've got another book talk video for you guys and the book we are going to be talking about is Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. This book was published in September of this past year, 2016, so it's relatively new. I came across it when I was searching through the um, new releases slash bestsellers in literary fiction on Amazon and the um, the blurb about it sounded very interesting, and I'm a big fan of Ann Patchett's in general. Um, she's an absolutely dream of a writer, and she's won um, a fair bit of awards, and she also does some short story uh, writing, which is very, shines, kind of shines through in this book, because there are so many passages that could almost stand alone. Like the first 32 pages of this book could be its own story on its own and stand strongly, which I love because especially if you followed along with any of my book talks last year, um, I talked a lot about some of my favorite short story writers and how I really appreciate a well-written short story because it's very difficult to do. You have to get it all in and make a big solid punch in such a short amount of time. I think people uh, don't really give enough credit to how much talent that takes to be able to do well. But anyway, Commonwealth. Commonwealth is the story of a family, um, initially two families that um, merge together to become one. This book, I find it hard to sum up in um, very few words. I remember when I was even halfway through the book, I kind of thought to myself like, how am I going to describe this to someone who hasn't read it? So, I guess here's the best I can do. The book starts off like a tightly wound ball of string or elastics. And it's wound so tightly and you don't really know where it's going to go. But then by the time you reach the end, every layer is laid out so beautifully and so... Um, skillfully in front of you that your mind's just blown with how it had all been woven together to begin with. So let's just talk for a second about the first line of this book. This book has one of my favorite first lines and it says the christening party took a turn when Albert Cousins arrived with gin which is is a great place to start. So how the book begins as as we just heard it's a christening party um, Fix and Beverly are having a christening for their second child. When Albert, or as we know him later, Bert Cousins shows up, he's uninvited. Um, he had heard about the party through a friend and while trying to avoid his own children, <laughs> of which he has four, he decides to just kind of show up at the party because he's got nowhere else to be and he doesn't want to go home. And um, from there, it's kind of love at first sight for Bert and Beverly. Beverly being the mother of the baby being christened and the wife of Fix. So that's where it all kind of kicks off. It's the early 1960s. Bert and Beverly just kind of fall in love. And then their families have to intertwine because there are six children involved. What happens next is a telling of the story of these families over five decades. So it takes us from the 60s up into present day. And we are shown these children's lives. So before I get too ahead of myself, not only does it span five decades, but it goes in and out um, of whose perspective we're hearing the story from, focusing mainly on the children um, who grow from small children to middle-aged men and women. And <laughs> it's really quite left me speechless. I loved it. All of the characters are so well written. It's just, it's amazing. And it's hard to get too much into it without giving too much away. So, <sighs> So we've got the christening party, Bert and Beverly falling in love, 
then we kind of fast forward and the baby from the christening franny she's now um, a young woman and she's working in a bar and she meets a author that she has been just kind of taken with her whole you know reading career she's she's loved him she can't believe he's there and they begin a relationship and during that relationship she steer, she shares stories of her family um, like the death of one of the children the oldest boy Cal she shares these stories with her author um, partner lover and he later turns it into a book and it's there that everyone kind of comes face to face with um, their own ugliness and their own um, darkness and demons and there are there are scenes that are hard to read like when the children are younger and they're made to move from their home in California where they lived with their mom and their dad to Virginia where their mom has taken them to now live with their stepfather Bert um, they don't want to be there and you know they try to make the best of it because and they kind of band together because they don't hate each other these kids these six children but they hate the parents so they kind of unite as a front together against them and um, one of the boys uh, the the oldest boy he's allergic to bees and he carries Benadryl in his pockets just in case he's ever stung by a bee and um, what they take to doing is the older five take to giving the youngest boy Benadryl when they're out on adventures so that he falls asleep and they can just leave him wherever he falls asleep and then go back and pick him up at the end of the day before he wakes up or just as he's waking up. And let's just say that later comes to bite them in the ass. Um, and it's about forgiveness and loyalty and um, how we can move past things if we allow ourselves to and it's about mortality and it's about um, letting go and being okay and it's 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 a difficult book to talk about because you know you can't with some books you can say well it's about this thing that happens but this isn't so much about this thing that happens it's about these these moments that happen and the feelings that come with them so it's hard to talk about but it is so good and it might be if not the best book i read in 2016 it's definitely top three so and actually i might do a video pretty soon about like the top five books that i read in 2016. they're not necessarily all going to be have been published in 2016 but that i read in 2016 but i will try to keep them to newer releases um so yeah if you like books that are about families and that bond that keeps us tethered together no matter how hard and difficult and painful it is sometimes um, definitely check out Commonwealth. You can get it on Amazon for, I think, less than 20 bucks, and it's, it's an excellent, excellent read. If you've read it, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Um, and yeah, like I say, if you haven't, I would definitely recommend it. I give it two, two incredible thumbs up, and Anne Patchett is just, she's, she's one of a kind when it comes to her writing style, and the way that she's able to just weave stories together so intricately that uh, like I said you know halfway through I was like I don't even know how I'm going to describe this book and I still don't entirely know but I got a little closer I think <laughs> so yes definitely check out Commonwealth um, I also wanted to do a few shout outs today I've got three channels that I want to mention um, this week the first is, and of course, as always, I will have them linked down below. The first I want to mention is a lovely lady whose channel name is Mad Blender. She is um, just this this lovely woman. She's currently doing um, sort of a minimalist 
series on her channel talking about it, doing some decluttering, um, and I've really been enjoying those videos. She's vegan, she, um, she just has a lot of really interesting content, different content than you see a lot sometimes around, around these parts, but um, I love it and I think you probably will too. The second channel I want to talk about is Kitty Cat Loves Makeup. She is this wonderful woman who, for from pretty much the beginning of my channel, uh, we kind of connected and um, she's been such a wonderful support and I'm just so happy to know her and she does a lot of great um, haul videos and unboxings and reviews. So if you love beauty, definitely check out her channel. She's just a delight to watch. There's this glow about her. She always seems so happy and um, she's just lovely. So please go check her out. And finally, another um, amazing woman, which I know I must sound like a broken record, but of course if I'm suggesting their channels to you, I think they're all wonderful. And that is Elizabeth's Life and Style. She again has been around for so long on my channel, just such a friendly, wonderful woman. She does um, a lot of vlogs on her channel, which I absolutely love. There's some reviews and hauls and stuff here and there. And she's just, again, she's so, um, there's such a, uh, an air about her, such a positive, um, welcoming, friendly air about her. And, um... Yes, definitely go check her out, especially if you love watching vlog channels. Go take a look, see what you see, and definitely let them all know that I sent you. Um, and yeah, that's it for tonight, you guys. I will see you on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend, that it's stress-free, and that you're feeling good. I'll see you Monday. Bye, guys.